These are the Denon Pearl Pro headsets. It's a noteworthy competitor in this really cluttered and super busy and kind of confusing noise canceling headphone market. They're coming in at 7,400 Rand. That's what their recommended retail price is, which isn't cheap, right? It's just shy of 10K and if you cut it a certain way, but they are a step above what your regular run of the mill headphones are. If you're familiar with my content, you'll know that Jess, my wife, uses Bose uh, noise cancelling headphones because they have much better noise cancelling. They're actually top of the range, best on the market for noise cancellation. But these Den and Pearl Pro headsets offer something compelling because they've added some other extra features if the best noise cancelling isn't necessarily for you or if you just want really good noise cancelling but a whole bunch of extra features. And I think that's kind of where these things are going to stand out. So let's kick things off with the specs. The Den and Pearl Pro headsets boast eight hours of earbud battery life per charge, right? But the case that this comes in uh, provides an additional, well, boosts it up to 24 hours. I can't really do the math on that off the top of my head, although that isn't 24, uh, never mind. But here's the big kicker is that this case supports wireless charging. The Bose is quite comforts, however, don't. One thing I did notice though, when I was wireless charging these is that they do get extremely hot for some reason. And the indicator light on my wireless charger that indicates when something is full, just it kept red the whole time, which means that it didn't uh, identify when this was full. And it definitely was charged overnight. So I know it was full and the case was very hot. So I don't know if that's a concern or if that means that this, you know, you just have to just charge it for a little bit and then take it off. But it does have some really cool features with quick charging. It does also have a USB-C over here. And you can quick charge this for an uh, to get an hour's use for five minutes. So that's really cool. If you are going to have a run for 40 minutes or whatever the case is and you just need your headphones, you just dump this onto the charger quickly um, and you'll get uh, a, good, a good hour out of it. For voice calls, these earbuds feature aptX voice for a super wide band. It's 32 kilohertz uh, voice calls and eight microphones that listen all around you, ensuring that you get these clear calls. So uh, this is what it sounds like. So this is the audio that is coming straight from the headsets. I don't know what the quality is like um, right now, but this is what you're hearing is the quality. It's going to be pretty similar to what you get on phone calls. Uh, and what you get um, when you are filming uh, videos like this. My favorite feature, however, this is kind of the standout for me, is that it's got multi-point connectivity, which allows you then to connect this device to two other devices simultaneously, which means that you can switch seamlessly between two devices. Even if they've got Bluetooth, that's older than Bluetooth 5.3. An example here is I have this connected to my watch as well as my phone. So when I go out running and I leave my phone at home, I don't have to like manually reconnect it like I have to do with my Galaxy Buds when I go for a run. I can literally just leave my phone and it knows it's connected. It will just switch right over to my watch immediately when it doesn't have access to my phone. And vice versa, if I've left my uh, watch at home when I leave with this, it doesn't um, like it, it automatically jumps through over to the phone uh, to stay connected to an audio source. And then it's also got this uh, ability to identify where that music is playing. So if you press play on your smartwatch while it's connected to your phone as well, that audio will then come through from your watch. You know what I mean? That becomes the audio source and vice versa again on your phones if you're, or your PC, whatever you've connected it to. This is really cool if you are like a business person and you're sitting at a coffee shop and you need one pair of headphones, but you're using a, your laptop or your notebook and you need to listen to meetings or participate in meetings or whatever the case is, review footage and connect to your phone at the same time uh, because you can do that. Say a phone call comes in, you can just switch to your phone instantly. It's got an IPX4 rating, making it weather and sweat resistance, which is great if you're running in the rain um, or just sweating all over them. What you can't do with an IPX4 uh, rated device though, is you can't like jet water into it or submerge it. So don't drop this into the pool or the toilet. I don't know why you drop it into the toilet, but don't, or a puddle when you're running or something. Make sure that you don't do that, um, but you should be safe for really sweaty and wet sessions with your earbuds in. Um, you, you know, you don't wanna, you don't wanna damage these guys. I mean, they are seven, like seven and a half grand. Why would you wanna do that? Thoughts off to my run. They fit very well. Um, I did have to do some trial and error on making sure that I didn't use the wingtips. Everyone's gonna have different kinds of ears, right? So I didn't use the wingtips and I used those felt 
squidgy ones, not felt, foam. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they actually fit in really, really well. I've got immersion mode on now, so I can hear a little bit what I'm talking about. And that was one of the other things that I noticed that even though there's no noise cancelling activating on and off, switching immersion mode off and on, or social mode. Social mode seems to do that. It seems to get rid of the noise cancelling, which is very cool. It's just like, I think, a bit of a communication uh, problem in the app because, you know, traditional stuff would have to do that. And also, I was connected to my watch the whole time. And often when I review headsets, they often disconnect. The Bluetooth isn't strong enough. I'm swaying my arm. There's sweat dripping everywhere. There's lots of reasons why it would potentially not work. And uh, yeah, it works very well. I didn't have one drop. Scroll. Hey, Scroll, what are you doing? Where are you going? The entire experience with the Denon products, I think all of them, happens through the Denon headphones app. And one of the cool things is that it's got this ability to personalize the sound with three customizable profiles. It measures your sound uh, in, while you've got the earbuds in. It creates the perfect ear fit for you, so you put them in. It will then EQ the audio automatically to your ears and then create something called an immersion mode. The immersion mode is basically just like a really fancy bass boost, but that allows you to compensate for those really uh, terrible uh, MP3 files or whatever that you're streaming with, where the high ends are cut off and it just sounds like like a broken, I always think it sounds like a broken cymbal, you know, like on a drum set. I don't know if you know what that sound that I'm talking about. And it, it seems to eliminate that uh, quite well when I put that immersion mode all the way to the top. For the price, it's expected, it's got noise cancellation and it's got something called social mode, something that a lot of earbuds have these days, which is the ability to listen to your environment around you. It basically gets rid of that um, the noise cancellation or the, uh, the immersion mode so that you can participate in conversations around you. And that like, it, it's good for the health of the headphones so you don't have to like take them in and out. I've actually broken a pair of noise cancelling uh, wireless earbuds because they didn't have that feature. And I removed and dropped one of my buds on the ground and they fell. And, and that's, that's, that's the reality of it. So having a social mode, I find very convenient, especially with very expensive earbuds because I can put them away, make sure that they're safe and protected, as well as just like having them on my ears at all times. But the app is really cool, actually. Um, it looks really nice. Uh, it's really easy to use. Uh, it's not too complicated. and allows you to customize noise canceling settings and activate social mode or deactivate social mode, whichever you'd like uh, to do that. You'll have those three profiles that you've created. Um, or you can also customize the touch features of it because it's got touch controls on the side. However, there's a couple of things that I wish they had done. Although the touch is really good, it works very well. Each of the earbuds have four different input gestures that you can have. So it's like single tap, double tap, triple tap, and then tap and hold. What would be nice because the form factor on these guys is really big, right? It's like this really round, it's like the size of a, I'm trying to think, it's like the size, it looks like the size of a 50 cent South African 50 cent coin, which is pretty big. I would want more swipe features, like being able to swipe up and down like uh, the Bose Acquired Comforts, you know, you can swipe up and down. That would be cool to just like change the volume like that as an extra input instead of having to tap, tap. So I've actually like that tap and tap hold, I don't even use. Um, I don't like that interaction, especially while I'm running. And bizarrely, you can change the immersion mode, but you cannot activate or deactivate noise canceling. Which is, which is weird, but that is something that they could potentially uh, include on a software update because it literally is just tapping, maybe adding it as an option to one of the tap features. I currently have just the standard like stop, start, uh, a, a track, skip a song, you know, volume up, volume down, that kind of thing. Those are inputs that are helpful for me when I'm running or doing exercise. Okay, future grant here. The, imagine this area as a dial to change volume. How cool would that look? That would be so sick. I don't know why they haven't even just like a like a a rim wipe or something. It would be so cool. The earbuds support uncompressed audio with lossless and spatial audio technologies. Now, this is great for audiophiles who care about those kind of things, but with Bluetooth, I'm not too sure it makes a huge difference. But I always say that regardless of the bottleneck of any system, high performance should be a very uh, important priority because you'll just put the, the priority onto another technology to improve. For instance, if we get lossless audio, we've got to really improve Bluetooth 
to get the most out of that lossless audio. I must say though, that even though it supports lossless, and I know there are gonna be a lot of audio files that are gonna be super pumped with that. Uh, and on my phone, on my Samsung, I've had to put it into developer mode to, to see those extra codecs. Codecs, I feel, play less of a role than the actual like EQ, a hardware EQ that you can. So you can customize the EQ per profile, but also that immersion mode that they've created is a huge game changer. Like you've got to listen to it. It really does feel like, wow, when you've got a personalized profile for you and you've got an immersion mode, it does feel like what it's doing is it's pulling down those, those, those noisy high ends and it makes it sound like a much better audio file than probably what you're streaming on Spotify, which is what you want because they've taken the bottleneck of your 4G that you are streaming Spotify through and the bit rate with, with which Spotify is giving you and then providing you with a really, really good sound. But you can change your Spotify bit rate, obviously, and you can change the codec with which Spotify is, is uh, streaming with and you can get like a really good audio experience. All those things hold hands really well and create like a miniature ecosystem that you didn't really know that your devices had. From a design perspective, I actually like them. I, at first I didn't, I saw the pictures, they look terrible in pictures, but when you've got them on, they look very, very cool. Uh, in the box, there's a whole bunch of uh, ear tips uh, that you can use. You get like extra small, small, uh, medium and large, and then they've got um, foam uh, tips, which is great for, better for noise isolation, because you can squeeze them, put them in your ear, and they grow bigger. And that's cool because th those kinds of foam tips aren't often included, even the high-end ones. I don't think there was one in the Quiet Comforts. And if I, st I stand corrected, but what I remember when we when we did that, I, I did not see them. And there's two different kinds of uh, wing tips as well. So you can like, you know, if you prefer having a wing tip to fit into your ear more comfortably or not, you can get those. I found those very uncomfortable. So I like those stock standard ones. Yeah, they're actually way more comfortable than they appear. What I don't like though is ah, this case is a bit nonsense. I, it's a bit crap. Like it works, right? But this hinge, I don't know, you're gonna, not gonna be able to see this here, but this hinge is like loose. It's not like super tight. I'm sure if I, there we go. <laughs> it like, it'll come out of your bag um, if it's like thrown around. You will hope I haven't damaged those. But yeah, so I really would have liked those. Uh, I might find a cover for it or something because that would be that would be ideal. But it's great that it's got it wireless charging when a lot of other competitors don't. I did uh, encounter some connectivity issues. That does take some time to connect to the the Denon headphone app, not to your phone. But when you want to change any of the profiles or change your noise cancellation or whatever the case is that you need to do in the app, which you don't have to do all the time, yeah, to get into that app is a little bit a little bit slow. But um, it's not the end of the world because they connect really quickly to your phone, and once those profiles are set up, you're good to go. The earbuds weigh 8.6 grams, and the case uh, weighs 55.5 grams, so it's relatively small, loose, and very light in your ear. The buds do use Bluetooth 5.3 and they support APTX and AAC codecs for those of you who know and who care. So in conclusion, I really like these. Um, it, like they're a new brand to me. Like, although I think that both, especially the Quiet Comforts, the Quiet Comforts are better noise canceling all round devices. They are a bit more expensive. And if you are a heavy audiophile, that might be a concern for you, but Audio files are gonna be stoked with this because it is a little bit more affordable and it's got like lossless audio and a bunch of fun bunch of features that like really pack it in. These are probably gonna be my main drivers for a while. So I'll let you know if you want to, like how they go. I'll just read, I'll just reply to some of the comments in the coming weeks. Uh, and I think this is a really good contribution to, to the sound world, the audio file world. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you guys in another one. Cheers.